Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Margarita here. Today we have a guest speaker, Sindhu Varathan. Let's hear about her journey, defying the odd and conquering challenges. Let's hear about her journey of faith. Hi Margarita, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. I came to Australia in 2019 um, and uh, I think due to some life uncertainties, I came here after my wedding. Uh, but life turned out to be a little bit different than I expected. Um, so I was a single mom by 2013 when my daughter was born. Um, and I think since then, having Jesus as my... Uh, Jesus became very tangible. Like I was following Jesus. Uh, I knew God is real. And, you know, I knew there was encouragement from the Bible. But... My walk with Jesus became really, really real when um, I faced that biggest challenge of my life where I became a single parent and I went through lots of ups and downs in my own faith journey because uh, at one stage I thought God had betrayed me because I, because no one that trusts in God, uh, you know, when, when a hardship hits you, you're like, oh, did I do something wrong? Why did this happen in my life? And especially it happens with divorces and separation and health and sickness. We Christians think that as Christians, we have a bed of life is a bed of roses, but God doesn't differentiate that way. God did say in this life, you will have trials and tribulations. And when trials and tribulations hit Christians, why does it rock our faith so much? And the first question goes to God, God, why did this happen to me? Why me? Why me? So I went through that phase and it was a big hit of my faith, to be honest. And I went through a disappointment with God, frustration with God, anger with God. All the while, my faith was still intact. Like It was like um, having a loving relationship with someone and you know that you love that person, but you also have that... Uh, approachable uh, thing that you can go to them and say hey I'm feeling so upset that you did to me why what how do I handle this so it was that kind of relation with Jesus I was like God I, I don't know but I do know that you always work things together for good because your word says that so I I choose to believe but it's hard for me to believe so I went through that phase uh, but drawing strength from Jesus each and every day was my key to my single parenting till now, I would say. And God has been really, really gracious. And every time when there was uncertainty and doubt, I just brought it to God. And then he would help me. Mirac it was a miracle after miracle after miracle. And sometimes it's just daily prayers. Like you, you, you say when you have a young child, when you have a baby that's crying, entire yes. night yes and then you have to go to work the next day as a mom you <laughs> you you have to rely on yes. god and you're like okay god i am exhausted but you you know as a mom and anyone can relate as a single parent and that's the single breadwinner of the family that you have to keep going and sometimes i felt like god i feel so lonely and i wish there was a helping hand to help me and Practically, you know, I'm like, Jesus, how can you help me practically? I know you're there. I know your word is there. I know, you know, um, with you all things are possible. But right now, it's not possible with me. Like, how am I going to send Hannah to daycare and drive one hour to work and then come back and do dinner for her? So in those moments, God puts those thoughts in your heart that he says, you know what? You don't have to do it alone. That's when he actually sends people. And that's when I realized that, you know, God does speak to you directly. Like yes, how right. he did to Moses. Like yes. he does speak to you directly through your word, to your Bible. But God created this beautiful community of human beings that we can actually make use of. You know, like I was part of a church. I had great friends and I was at this mentality that I would never take help from people. Like I could never receive, like my heart was closed with receiving. I was a great giver, 
I always want to bless people and I, I always been in a position where I would, you know, if I see a need, I'll go and help, be it material wise or someone needs a helping hand or so when things happen in my life, I don't know if it was pride. I don't know if it, the fear of people judging me that, oh, she wants or the fear that someone would take advantage of me as a single mom. I would never ask for help. So God had to break that in my life that, okay, you know what, Sindhu, you have your, I created community and I placed you in a community so you can seek help. So I slowly opened up to my church. I slowly opened up to my friendship circle and I told myself it's okay to ask for That's help. Right. <laughs> that was my first step to healing, I think, because sometimes as, uh, especially as single parents, you think that you're a super mom or a super dad or whatever. But we are all created for companionship, not only in the context of marriage. We all need each other. We are interdependent on That's each right. other. Yeah. Otherwise, God would not have created a community. He would have just created Margarita and Sindhu and put us in different worlds. So I, I think that that was that was one of my key things that God taught me to... Um, overcome my challenge the other challenge uh, was uh, acknowledging that i needed help uh, with such a big relationship breakdown and being a first time mom there were so many fears and uncertainties and a lot of uh, high intense emotions that you have to deal with so uh, i think the first step i took towards my healing and overcoming this um well-being thing that I had uh, is to get some counseling. So counseling is not bad. In, in, I come from a Hindu context and I come from an Indian Asian background That's where, right. um, you know, there is a stigma that if you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or counseling, you are, there is something wrong in your head or you're mentally unstable or something. So I had to break that stigma because people there are experts that can help you and for me what really helped was also prayer ministry and christian counseling because it aligns with my faith in what i believe and that's a core of my belief that jesus is there for me and how do i practically help myself and my family with jesus jesus words and how do i connect with jesus because you know i was at a state where i was angry with god i was questioning god i was going through a lot of emotions so christian counseling really helped me there was another way uh, that i was able to overcome uh, slowly on my, that actually those two things set me on the path of healing and where god, I, i believe where god wanted me to be right. so he can kind of I thought God was making me resilient. It's uh, it's a bit difficult. To, it's it's easy to say that now, mm -hmm. but at that time I was uh, I was really ashamed that I was a single parent. I was ashamed to tell people that I was single because I thought it was all my fault. You know that the marriage broke down, and uh, I used to tell God, God, maybe if I had done things differently, would it have worked or or whatever? But we have to realize. Um, that when a marriage is involved, it's two people's choices and it, it has to be hand in hand. That's and right. sometimes we cannot take responsibility for other people's actions. Got it. And something I had to let go to God. And even though we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness was a key thing for me in my healing journey. It took like uh, about six years for me to let go of the grudge I had towards my ex-partner. So I, it, the struggle was real. There were triggers and I had to constantly bring it back to God and be real with him. And what helped me was, um, you know, like I said, I used to be really reluctant to go to people and I had trust issues at that time because of the breakdown and the past relationship uh, and the marriage breakdown. So it was hard for me to open up to people uh, outside my safety network like psychologists or you know prayer counselors and people like that what really helped me was um write down my thoughts like i used to write letters to jesus uh, at the end of the day That's or when I, yes. whenever i had time uh, i would make it a point that i would write down my 
like I think a good vent is so crucial in your healing journey. And uh, if you can't find people to talk to, the best thing is talk to God. Like to a healing journey is like, oh, hang on, I'm feeling angry. Let me acknowledge it. How long have I been feeling this? Oh, that's because of the incident that happened yesterday. How was I feeling towards this person two weeks ago? I was good. So bring it to God, leave it there, have a went, go to a trusted friend, have a went, and then pray about it, give it to God. And one hard thing I had to learn was leave it to God and not take it back. <laughs> Yes. Every time you leave it to God and then something triggers comes along. God, mm -hmm. that happened like another day. So leave it to God, give it to God and just leave it at the altar. That's that's another thing as Christians. I think it's a constant reminder for us to leave it at the altar, leave it at the altar and always remember that. Choose to like, just remember that God loves you so much. I think the core of our foundation is John 3.16. It's like, God loved me. That means, you know, I can never be, like there is nothing in my life right now that is hidden from God. That is the core of your foundation. And in life's valleys, it's like a checkpoint. Where is my heart? You know, I could serve every Sunday. I could know all the verses in my Bible. I could talk like I know God inside mm. out, but when financial problems, where, where is our heart sitting at with Jesus? That's right. That's where you are. So that you have to have those checkpoints in your life where, so for me, my divorce was my checkpoint. When divorce happened in my life, no one marries to get divorced. I'm pretty sure everyone can agree. We of all course, marry for yeah. a happily ever after. Yes. But when things happen, what do we do with Jesus? Because we, we just tell ourselves, you know, I have Jesus. Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my foundation. Is Jesus still your rock when your actual world rocks? You know, so that has the challenges in my life. I, I wouldn't say it made me so resilient when it happened. I had my moments. I still have my moments and there are triggers. But the more I approach God, the more I know that he's the author of my life, he's the author of my child's life, he's the author of my family's life. I, I do have dreams. I do have dreams of family. I do have dreams for Hannah. I do have dreams bigger than ourselves that God put in our heart. But sometimes at the present situation, they don't seem happening. But faith requires action. God gives you the desires of your heart. So I do strongly believe when God puts something in your heart, it is from him. It is for if it aligns with extending his kingdom, bringing hope to people, blessing someone through your story, it's from God. Because God tells you, let your light shine. How do you let your light shine? You, not by sitting in your house and doing nothing about it. You got to like bring it out, like bring it out so the world can see. Share it with your mouth, write, do whatever it takes to bring Jesus to the world. It does take a lot of courage, mm. mom. And then when Hannah was born, I felt like, and I do know she's the biggest blessing from heaven. And with with something like that, I think when you become a mom, you you can relate that your whole world re revolves around that little human of being. Course. It's come with and you want to you want to give everything yes. to them, and sometimes you don't take care of yourself because you feel joy in like kind of sacrificing in a way that's not healthy too. You know, to center themselves as the center of our lives. But uh, with Hannah, because of the the things I went through, and because of the prayer and that's why she was named Hannah and her first middle name is Joyce because she brought so much joy into our too. lives. And it was more of a declaration that this child is going to be a joy. So I tell my daughter, and for me, being in this world, she was my purpose in my time of darkness. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't imagine my life otherwise if Hannah was not there because I, I felt like God was strengthening my purpose through her so he was telling me I, I i felt so inadequate being a mom at that stage because i thought i'm going to raise this child in a great family environment you know with with 
everything. But when she was born in the midst of the separation and divorce, I was like, Lord, what is this? What's the plan for this child? So I, I felt really inadequate to bring a child up, raise a child on my own because my family is all back in India. So I, I was, I, even though I had friends and church and everything, it's like, oh my gosh, I have a newborn in my hand. What am I going to do? Because I have, a, I have to work and do everything. But I think I found, I, in a way, God put some purpose in my heart and the strength that, you know, I gave you this child because I trust that you can bring up this child. If I thought that you were not a mom, uh, you couldn't be a mom, I would not have given you with that responsibility. So I also want to like speak to the moms that think they're inadequate who think that, oh my goodness, I don't know, I, I'm not giving enough to my kids. I go through that feeling sometimes too. Like you want to give all the material I blessings. All of us love All of us like, And sometimes you feel guilty that you can afford something or you can't take them on expensive holidays or or even take them to every birthday parties or whatever they want to go. And, you, and the devil is really great at putting inadequacies in our heart and then blocking us from what we are supposed to do for our children. For me with Hannah, I think... She was my inspiration. And then through her, it's amazing how God can speak to you through a child that can't even speak. You know, like like a blessing, they come. And then he, and, and my whole life was, first five years of my life, it was all about, I was like, I want to give a great life to you. And God gave you to me. And uh, um, so I'm going to do everything it takes. So, you know, that protected my heart from self-harm that protected my heart from going into depression that to me you will draw your inspiration from her and now she's 10 and you can see the foundation you laid for your child in the early years of their life now they speak into your life which is quite amazing because god even speaks to children right god speak not even speak god speaks to children and children minister to you so for me day in and day out that child has been an amazing blessing and she's my inspiration because I feel and I strongly believe that as a mother, you have additional responsibility and as a parent, let's That's say right. as a parent, be it a father or a mother, because you're raising a generation for Christ. As a Christian that you went through a lot of challenges and setbacks in life, what's motivates you um, to make an impact for your community? with things that you went through, you know, like um, in that times, I can see you as a great role model for other people, you know, to overcome the barrier and the challenges and use that experience to be a blessing mm. for the community. Do you want to share sure. your journey? Sure, thank you. Journey? I think um, at the start, I had no plans of entering, um, like I have no background in the beauty pageant or the fashion industry. And I, I did not even look at myself as a model or um, someone that can make an impact in the fashion industry as such. Uh, but when I went through this whole um, separation and divorce challenge and the single parenting journey, I think was my um, start of looking at the world a different way. Until then, I, should be, I would be honest that uh, I didn't think about single parents much because you know i was happily married and you know those kind of things but when that thing happened in my life my attention i felt like god was turning my attention towards single parents suddenly and i was able to relate to the i i not just relate to but i was actually experiencing everything that comes with single parenting the challenges the the joys the worries the uncertainties the fears the disappointments and anger that a woman has to deal with in addition to being a mother that's a lot that's like yes. intense emotions to go through um so i felt like god was um i've always been a person that wanted to impact community and uh, i wanted to do big things for god and on a larger scale so i was i was always a person like that and something bigger than yourself something yes. bigger than myself <laughs> and uh I, I've always seen myself as a very audacious person. Like I'm not afraid to challenge something that's wrong. I would speak out and I would speak out and I would speak out. And throughout my journey, um, 
when I reflect back my Christian days, it's always been about sharing Jesus in my life. And then I was like, um, and then came this, uh, you know, I was Google searching. Uh, I Google searched how to be a, a role model oh. because I didn't want to be a model. But I was like, how to be a role model? And then came this pageant, uh, Australian international pageants. And it talked about, it's not just about, you know, your clothes and your fashion sense. That's it's right. also about being a role model to the community. So according to this pageant, it's like um, you have to do, you have to choose a course that is close to your heart and you work for it for one year. I thought hmm, that might be a good thing. I actually waited one year. Like I did a wow. search in 2019, but I, I never had the courage to apply for it because I never thought like how I thought myself, I was so inadequate to be a mother. I, I thought I had the first thing that, you know, I had in my mind, was, oh, those girls are so pretty. They have long straight hair, flawless skin and, you know, silky smooth skin and whatnot, you know, and I'm a mom, I'm just given birth and I got wrinkles, I got, so there's so much insecurities that as a mom that comes with your body as well, you know, like you just can't get to love yourself because you've just given birth to a child and you do not look at your body the same way. There's so much self-image issues that I had to battle with. And then I was like, Oh, you're thinking about beauty pageant? Like you can't even deal with, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror now. And then you want to do the beauty pageant. Um, so after a year, I had the courage to just messenger the director. Uh, and it's so amazing how God puts, like connects the dots. This director was also Christian and she was doing great things in her community. And the reason why she wanted this was to let the people help people shine their light. And she was happy to take me in, even though I was on a late notice. And I chose uh, Save the Children um, because as a South Indian and an Indian background and from an Asian country, I've seen for myself the stigma of a girl's education. That's very Like when there is an education, the girls are always left behind. I, I have grown up in village and town and metropolitan town. So my journey has been everywhere. And I've seen uh, kids younger kids who are female, the first option when there is a struggle in the family, the, the female kid is the one that's taken out of school first, not the male child. So I've always had a thing for education and I believe I was able to survive myself in such a very uncertain situation in my life because I had education and I was able to find a job and you know, keep going and put food on the table. It really helped with my mental health because I was not dependent on anyone and uh, also provide security for your child. And when there is financial providence, it takes a lot out of your of course, mental stress yeah. as well because you have to feed your kids and yourself. Um, you, so you're basically doing two job as a mom and the and the dad yeah. and also managing yourself yes. because you don't know what's going on with That's you right. in terms of relationship and also as a young mom you you don't know what you're doing like you're like am I doing it right am I feeding the baby why is the baby crying and all that stuff so with the um, pageant journey um, I was really inspired that uh, there was a pageant that actually talks about being a role model and I wanted to be a role model to the younger generation and like I said before I wanted to be an inspiration to my daughter and I wanted to break the stigma in the fashion industry that beauty is just not how you dress how you show yourself how you present yourself beauty is actually deep within That's and right. irrespective of what size color however you are you are able to make a difference. Like I was nothing. Like I came from nothing, and I, I and I should be honest. I I knew nothing about fashion. I wear the same jeans. My daughter still tells me, "Mom, you wear the same jeans to school pickup every single day of the week." And you, wear, why can't you just change something other than t-shirt and jeans? And I'm like, "That's me, Hannah." And I am happy the way I am. As long as I wear clean clothes, that's, that's all right. you should worry about. As long as I, you know, I don't, I'm not as stinking or dirty, yes. that's all you should worry about. So the pageant industry was something I felt, now I realize the pageant industry um, was something that God called me to. But at that time when it was there, and I only had this strong urge in my heart that apply, apply, apply. And I didn't know it was from God. I thought, and you know, as Christians, we also sometimes believe into the lies that 
Christians do not belong in the modeling industry. Christians don't belong because we have so much judgmental views on how we perceive different industries just because we are not part of it. You wouldn't know it unless you're part of it. And even though modeling industry can be a lot more different where what we see on social media, what we see on the news, there is always Christians there. And we need people to shine the light in every part. And the light from you is able to dispel or make a way or plant a seed, whatever. That's how I look at modeling industries. I still hold on to my ethics. I still hold on to everything. But it's a challenge. You have to wisely choose your opportunities. So this pageant paved that way for me. And I think through that pageant, I overcame the biggest hurdle of I am not enough. I am not beautiful enough. Like I had really low self-esteem. I don't know if people would believe that because I always come across as a very confident person that is happy with myself. And I am still to a certain extent. Uh, but at that time, I lacked zero i lacked i mean i lacked i lacked confidence because i was a new mom my body had changed so much and i was uh, you know i was feeding a young baby and i had no confidence in myself because i didn't have time to eat sleep or take care of myself and then god i felt like oh go apply for the pageant and i was like i don't think it's from god i think it's from me because i want i don't know i couldn't discern where it was coming from but when I went through the pageant and when I actually won, I, w I couldn't believe my eyes. I only went with the intention that, you know what, I'm going to network with people, women, like-minded women, and I'm going to see what I can do. And my roommate for that pageant, uh, she was the first runner-up. I was a winner and she was the first runner-up. Um, she was a committed Christian and wow. single parent as well. And we talked about our journeys and we are still connected now. So... She does great things in the community. And I see that pageant at that time for me was God connected the dots. He, he showed me that your pain is not so great. Sometimes we, when we go through things, there is a very high chance of us just sitting in that pit. It, it's okay to feel sorry for yourself for a certain time. But as Christians, we have to be resilient. We have to force ourselves. Like for me, it was not like, okay, God has got it all in control. I'm going to get up. It, it, was, it was hard. It was the hardest moments of my life that I had to really push myself, force myself out of bed and say, you're not going to stay there, Sindhu. Yes, you, you are going through a right now, a really bad time, really challenging time. So I was able to acknowledge it, but there was times I just couldn't get myself out of bed. Like I wouldn't talk to anyone. I w and I had this baby, but you still have to go keep going on. Those are the times I think very, very challenging. very challenging. And yeah. when you have, and when Hannah grew up, when she was three and four, you cannot cry in front of her. Like you have to hide your emotions. You have to go to a bathroom, cry for yourself. So during those challenging times, you know, like when it's very, very hard to start, you know, like a day, how do you offer? I think um, one thing that really helped me and I try to do it um, every day is going to God in the morning and um, I do believe everyone has priorities we all have you know crazy school runs in the morning and work commitments and everything um, one thing I um, struggled when I was a new mom and that changed my perspective on prayer was um, I was very caught up on doing my devotions in the morning. And if I don't do my devotions in the morning, I would feel very guilty that I didn't spend time with God and then would carry that guilt into my entire day. But God uh, helped me to realize that, you know, um, doing, it's doing life with Jesus. Like, like Jesus is sitting here listening to a conversation and didn't have a great day or whatever. And then um, the way I tell my daughter, the way I, I nourish her soul and put a seed in her heart for relationship with Jesus is um, you can go to God anytime. That's so right. it's like on the weekend, like intentional time. The most important thing is you nourish that relationship, block things that are not from God. And how do you know they are not from God? Only God can tell you, you know, and you have to be connected with God. 
And I think the discernment is something that um, really helps me. And sometimes I do, you know, I get it wrong as well, but God doesn't expect us to be like perfect. He, right. he says we are imperfect and uh, and I'm so relieved he says you're imperfect <laughs> because I don't have to like try to be perfect with him. I think you're such a great role model and also a great mom as well. Oh, I like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that you also run a project um, that's very close to your heart. Do you want to tell us more about your project? I am, uh, I, my heart is really for education uh, purely because of my own life story. I think, um, I believe education is a key to like everything. Like it opens up your minds, it opens up your hearts to what's in the world. And it also provides you with the opportunity to be able to be dependent, uh, sorry, independent of others and things so you can provide uh, practically if you have to live in this world, you know, we all need money and there, there should be providence and that comes with respect, you, you know, it comes through education and uh, with my background coming from a South Asian family, my parents always have, whether we had little or more, I think my parents invested in my education and I got a degree and I was able to, when things didn't go the way I thought they would go and when uncertainties hit and I had to move out of my family home, I was able to you know, provide for my daughter because I had education, I was able to find a job and, and, you know, and, and also uh, that, was my, that was my foundation, I think. So I, and education is also a way where I want to, I see so many kids in India. The reason I talk about India is because I grew from the village and I've seen, and, I, and my dad is still in connect, connection with those kids that really need help. And, you know, it's as little as $50 is all they need for a whole month of wow. school fee, including uniform and books and pencils and stuff rock bottom. And I've seen things from scratch. So... I want to help nourish their dreams. Mm. And all that those kids want is to study. And that shouldn't, that's fundamental for every child, be it a male or a female. But my heart goes more towards the female kids because they're the ones that are like cut off from education, provided if there is something wrong or challenging, because they don't see a point in most of the back. Uh, you know, thinking villages and things, they think a woman is, you know, you got to get married and that's it, you know, give birth to children and that's your life. But through my story, I wanted to emphasize on education and I really wanted to break the stigma that a woman's life does not end in a marriage. That's right. You know, uh, and marriage is something, a chapter in the book of the life of a woman and, uh, no matter what happens with your marriage, um, you know, you, you mean you can't control what happens. You you can control, or you can only control what you can do in a marriage. Uh, I go to school, I mean, I ended up in a single parent life and I got thrown into a pageant world, which was way out of my league. And, and then, and then I found my purpose and I was like, oh, Actually, and I'm, I'm able to relate to single parents more and I'm able to see I have more compassion for education. I mean, if, if kids cannot uh, get education properly and I'm like, okay, I'm able to see that God has blessed me with something. How can I, uh, you be know, a be a blessing? How can I bring that awareness to people? Like, I, and God placed you in a place where, you know, you have friends, you can, you can bring awareness to education and, and things. And I believe that when God puts us in different places, I, you're from a different country. I'm from a different country. That's right. God placed us in Australia. Why? So I think everyone should look for, not, just because, you know, something happened in your life, you know, it doesn't mean that your purpose is like um, diminished or your purpose has disappeared. Your purpose is still there. And I strongly believe that no matter what path you choose, blessing of God is there. The favor of God is still going to be there, but I think it's not going to be as effective as the path you would choose where he leading you. Leading you. He would still bless you because he's, he's an impartial God. He's a loving God. He's still, he, he pours rain on 
everyone very fair and just god so i think we shouldn't let these challenges to stop us from you know leading us into what whatever it is there is god's purpose nevertheless whatever biggest pain and for me i was really feeling really lonely and i was like god how long like what is this god what is this feeling i'm going through uh, and there were prayers that i prayed when um hannah was young that i told god i did not have any feelings towards you know um oh i want to get married i want to get remarried i didn't have any because my priority was hannah and then i my prayer for those 5 to 7 years was god you have to help suppress my feelings till i find the right person because i do believe if god gives me a desire of the heart to have a family he will provide that's right when i don't know i just have to be patient and i just have to keep faith and put faith into action and and keep doing things i need to do in alignment with god's will but you have to keep doing them i think your faith you know is inspirational um uh, sindu so just want to ask you you also author for the book right want to share the title of the book and then what is it all about you know sure um i think uh I uh, started writing a blog when um when uh, I was at the height of my separation and divorce and my blog is called uh, I asked the Lord what do you want to name it and then he said uh, I I really felt he said from his heart to yours wow that's amazing so and I was like uh, then I you know again doubts like if I say from his heart to yours will people believe that I'm hearing from your heart to my heart and my heart I pour it out but he helped me overcome that fear and doubt and uncertainty and i was like because my heart at that time was i want to hear your heartbeat like i want to hear what's in your heart for me for hana and i know it's not you know divorce is not god's plan but i want to know what 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 should i do with this like there is a broken vessel lord what do i do with this tell me what do i do with this so he said okay put the broken vessel on to the website so i started writing um and i've been writing since 2017 and just last year um you know as you walk with the lord and as you obey him in the little things he puts in your heart he actually opens up bigger opportunities so That's my right. first step was the blog and i i i didn't think i was a writer i didn't i didn't think i had time Uh, I didn't think I had any content uh, like a social media influencer to write on there and stuff. But I purely trusted God, and I told God, "If you want me to write, I would like you to give me the words." So God would give me one word, and I would it encouraged me to go and sit with God, and He'd give me something, and I would write it. And sometimes it's just about your experiences you go through in life, yes. because. Jesus is a tangible god. He's not a god that just sits on a rock and you go to him and pray and do things like that. Jesus is real. So sometimes he just tells me, write down how you felt today. Write down you had this challenge today. How did you face it? And how did how did you bring it to me or how did you deal with it? Those are the raw it was very raw even my English was like really raw like this is how I felt this is how I felt and I put verses and and how i well went through so last year i felt like god was telling me um i've been praying about legacy in the past couple of years yes. and when i hit 40 i was like what are people going to see after i leave this earth i want to leave some legacy i yeah. want to leave a legacy so uh, i thought book would be a great idea so i was asking the lord what do i write and i took up this writing challenge with my daughter so it was like a one on one bonding time with her as well and 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 when i um wrote that book it was just about poetry you know and it was just a poetry writing challenge so i uh, got i write i used to write songs um for ever since i was a new christian from um 2002 i used to write i had this heart of writing songs um like putting my feelings into songs um and then god god highlighted to me certain songs um about uh the name of the thing he gave me was blooms over glooms so glooms are how i see all the life's uncertainties and all the darkness all the fears and everything you go through as a human with a high intense like i've been through some pretty amazing really intense 
emotions in my life and that are glooms of life. And sometimes when you do not address those glooms, it just takes you into eternal death. Like you just, I have seen people getting stuck in the rut. They cannot come out of it because you're so into it. And I've been there too. And in God's grace, I, I draw, he drew, drew me out. And blooms are, he's just, you know, speaking and he's just whispering over those blooms, uh, blooms in, 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 through his word, through the experiences. So I felt uh, the Isaiah 53, look, I'm doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. Can you not see? So when I when I told God that, even He gave me that. He said, "Okay, whatever the over." It was more of an overcoming thing. What do you do? What did I do? How it how it happened? And do, are you feeling a certain way? This is what you can do. And there are some mm -hmm. practical things as well. You know, sometimes self care. Just self care That's is not important. glorifying yourself. Yes. Self care is like. Treating yourself as a child of God and before you're a mom, before you're a wife, before you're someone to someone, you are God's daughter. That's right. And your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you have a, a responsibility towards yourself to be able to take care of yourself. How can you pour from an empty vessel? So that was one important thing I learned as well because we as women are so good at taking care of other people and putting less into us so that book is all about that and i and my prayer was even though it, it's a really small book and i do plan to write more uh, as the lord leads but that was my first uh, venture out and I, I was very happy that the book is out and uh, it's 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 uh, i hope people buy it and be blessed by it such amazing journey, Sindhu. It's not easy, but you turn to your experience, your pain, your disappointment, and trust it into God's hand, and He turned it into something so beautiful. Still a work in progress, isn't <laughs> it? Yeah, it's still, he's still turning, and I still have my, you know, you go yes. through doubts and everything, and that's part of life. Yes. And uh, you always remember that, you know, these are trials and tribulations. Sindhu, I didn't say it's a bit of process, but in this world, I'm still part of this world, That's and there right. is trials, there is tribulations, and uh, God is a God who makes impossible possible. Yes, and He says that He has done that. Anything is possible with God. Anything is possible, mm -hmm. and we have to believe that, and yes. not only believe that. With belief and faith comes action. That's right. There is in the light. Yes. Not always sit and, you know, like do self-pity and loathe in our own sorrows because we have God. We can go to God, give our problems to God, and he do not be anxious about anything. But so why are we is. why are we worrying? And in, in in as much hard it is for me to say, I do worry sometimes too, but the thing is you snap yourself out of it. You snap you. I, I remember I had this conversation with one of the pastors uh, from a different church. And then I said, I worry. I worry about so many things. And then he said, but he, he shared from his personal life that mm. he said, whenever I worry, I turn off the worry button. I turn on the prayer button. That's, That's really something <laughs> that really has stuck yes. with me. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, Sindhu, enough worrying. Turn on the prayer button. And mm. One thing that has really, really helped practically is praise music in my home. Yes. Whether I feel it or not, just praise music, just blast music in your home. And God knows. And, and we just have to trust God. Trusting God is easy, but that's what we all struggle with because we are such intellectual human beings that God created <laughs> us to be and we want everything to be reasonable. We want everything laid out. We have... Plan A, B, C, D, E, and everything fails, then you go back to God. And we learn it the hard way, I think. It's, it's still a journey, isn't it? But sometimes we just have to trust God. There's a lot of things that we cannot control in life. Mm. But one thing is that from your personal experience, you actually put your faith during those darkest time and trusting God to pull you out from that situation. And God sending it something so beautiful. There is a hope. Our God is a good, good father. He never forsake us in the time of need. He never leave us. Absolutely.
Thank you for watching. Take care and stay well. Bye for now.